Good morning everybody, this is Steve and thanks for joining this webinar on UBOSS Packet Analyzer. Uh, I think this is, uh, we've got a bit of a mixed audience here, so just sort of by way of introduction, I just want to sort of set the scene in terms of where Packet Analyzer sits uh, and what its, what its real power is and its value for you guys. And, uh, and then Ed's going to sort of run a, a hands-on sort of show and tell session. So, um, so as we mentioned, Packet Analyzer is a part of, of UBOSS. It's nothing to do with broadsoft provisioning or services or billing or any of that at all, but it's, 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 it's actually a sort of a network monitoring tool. It's a suite of tools that really give you guys as our resellers visibility of what's happening on, on the network. Uh, and I think one of the key takeaways is that this is the kind of product feature for you guys that actually makes you a service provider in your own right, because it actually gives you sort of, you know, that network intelligence at a really granular level. Uh, so, for example, there's, there's a few tools that Ed's going to talk about. One of them is, a, is a, uh, a way for a customer to flag a poor quality call. So if a customer does have a poor quality call because there's a degradation in the, in the access or whatever the case may be, this is a way by using Star 57 that they can immediately flag that. You guys as the reseller is notified, we're notified, and importantly, you boss, Packet Analyzer, is going to capture that PCAP trace. So, what we're doing here is, if the customer's got a problem with calls, we're not going back to them retrospectively and saying, Can, what number did you dial, when did it happen, what you know, what was the experience, all that kind of stuff. It's just, it's hit star 57, it's, it's done. So that really, I think the key message is, from a customer service point of view, that really puts you on the front foot in terms of looking after the customers. So that's a key element. And a couple of other things is just to provide visibility of, of, um, of what's happening live. So for example, live registrations on the platform, you know, how many phones are registered, how many calls have we got up, you know, that kind of stuff. How many devices have I got? Uh, and what firmware are they running? So I think some of these things as well shouldn't be seen in isolation. They are used with some of the other UBOSS tools. So for example, um, the bulk, uh, bulk config tools. So for example, if you see a whole lot of um, older phones on older firmwares, you can build a new config file, then you can do a remote device reboot to restart the phone, it uploads the config. So, so I think that there's, um, this is a part of sort of the, the real practice, the real-time monitoring tools we've got. Um, so if you've got any questions, please use the uh, toolbar on the right-hand side, and we'll pick those up at the end. Um, and in the meantime, I'm going to hand over to my esteemed colleague, Ed. Thanks, Steve. Hi. Good morning, everyone. Um, Ed Frossel here from the Third Line Technical Support Team, uh, Senior Applications Engineer, uh, do a lot of product development, and I'm going to have a quick walkthrough of what Steve's just discussed. So for those of you that have been on or haven't been on before, um, Pack Analyzer is built into UBOSS. It's not a separate portal. It's all within the uh, the current web portal that you're all used to using. And if you're not used to using it, well, get on board. Let's take a look. So here we go. So what we're going to do, when you log in as a reseller in UBOSS, uh, I'm along the left-hand side menu, which is your usual reseller options. There's an option under Tools, Packet Analyzer. It currently, it's currently still in a beta testing phase. Um, so that's just what it tells you there. And these are where our menu options are. So we're going to run through a few, uh, through a few different bits and pieces. What I'm going to touch on first is calls. Now, Packet Analyzer is actually available at your reseller level, your business level, and a business site level. So you can really drill down into the information if you need to. So we're going to jump a little bit here between sites and reseller level, just to give you a good idea of what's happening. So what I'm just showing you here is a, a, a quick look at our graph for um, our demonstration suite here. Now, we've had a few calls up this morning. Um, and you can see they're all sort of ended at the moment. Um, what you can see at six o'clock this morning when we came in, uh, me and Dean here, mm. we started a few calls off, so you can see them here, and we've dropped a couple of calls off as well. And you can see sort of active call uh, detail. It's just a graph to show you your sort of level that's going on right at the moment. And again, this can be seen at the reseller level. Obviously, this is just a site level, so you can see not a lot of calls going on. There's only a few phones in the, in the demonstration suite. But as you follow along that graph, you can see there it changes from zero calls to seven, right down to nothing again. Um, you can also go to active calls here as well, and historic calls. And you'll see that these calls, if I do a quick search, we should see some where they've ended. Okay, what we're gonna do then, let me just change the date here. You can set your search field. Um, so we're gonna choose yesterday's date, and we're gonna hit a search here. And this shows all calls from that start date to this end date of what started, what's finished. And one of the key things that we found from a support point of view was um, 
a form of frustration, if you will, where people are having problems maybe with call, um, poor quality calls or maybe calls cutting off. Um, the constant frustration of us having to go back to resellers or maybe resellers having to go back to customers to ask, you know, when's the next example? Next time it happens, give us a call, let us know. So what we've enabled across the platform is uh, the ability to do a user-initiated trace. Now all that means is when a customer has a problem, after the end of that call, they should pick up their phone, dial star 57, they'll get a message saying that a trace has been performed on the last incoming call. And what actually happens is an email gets sent to a, an address that you guys will have defined, which we'll see shortly. Um, an email alert will come through to the people defined in that, in that alert. And we'll just go back to my email a second. And in here, this is what the alert will look like. So this is one I did earlier. Um, it's a trace of a call. So you see the reseller, the business, the site, and the user, and the from number. So this actually is the line port, so you know exactly which device has made the call, whether it's their primary or their secondary device. The number they've called, and the time of that call. So there's no trace here, but at least you know what call you're actually looking. Sorry, apologies. What you're looking for, um, and then if you go back within uh, UBoss Packet Analyzer, under this particular site, you can see here anything with a red flag against it is a call that was deemed poor quality. So in this case, the Yaylink T46 has flagged this call, and you can see here it's made the call to Star 57. This is actually the call we want to take a look at. And to take a look at that, we can do that in a couple of different ways. Um, we can download that trace if we want to. Um, a, so an actual PCAP that you can open with Wireshark if you're comfortable using that. And if you're on our um, technical training sessions that we run every month or so, uh, I do cover that in a little bit more detail. Um, but you can download that if you're comfortable looking at traces. Or you can also, again, a sort of higher level overview if you will, which does draw down. You can look here by clicking the call info, opens up this window, shows you all the segments where the call was from, to all across the network here, and then you can actually drill down into the messages if you want to. Um, so I can see here the first initial invite, I can look at that, all the details, I can see all the invite part there, the header, I can look at all the SDP showing me my codecs and so on and so forth. And you could drill right all the way down to the last message, so it was a request timeout uh, for whatever reason, so you could look into that if that was an issue. So you've got all that information there. So that star 57 is a real key point for a support point of view because you can really use that for customers if they've got continual issues. You don't have to chase them, for example. They will, they will send them to you. So um, maybe don't tell every customer about it so you're not bombarded with star 57 calls, hopefully. Um, but it's a good feature to use. Um, what we can then also do is obviously set up that alert. So at the reseller level only, you can come into here and do custom alerts. And the, the alert for the user initiative is here. So you can add your know, semicolon, you can add multiple email addresses in here if you want to. But if you just add those in there, hit save. Every time someone does a star 57, you'll get the email that I've just showed you. Um, what you can also set up is custom alerts. So you can give an alert specifically for a specific uh, SIP code. So for example, um, you might have a busy everywhere code, a 600 busy everywhere code. You could set that up in here, give it a, an alert definition and say, okay, uh, every time I get a 600, please alert me. Uh, I want it to expire in seven days, a maximum of 30 days that alert will continue for. Um, hopefully you have resolved it by then, but you can set up an email in there and a CC email so that every time a 600 busy everywhere message is sent across your customer base, and it's just you guys as a reseller, um, it will send you an alert every time one of those messages come through. Or maybe if you want to set up a, a fail call or every time someone gets an unauthorized, for example, uh, you can do that here. Set up those codes. Feel free to have a look on the internet for the SIP codes. But obviously if you've got someone who's got a, uh, we had a 408 timeout on that last call that I did a star 57 on, you could put a 408 in here so every time a 408 happens, you'll get alerted to that. So you can be aware of it without your customer even having to do star 57, and it can help you make, make you maybe aware of a problem that your customer's not even aware of yet. Okay, so that's custom alerts. Those will expire, and um, the thing with this as well, it's one alert at a time. So if you need to change the alert halfway through because you've resolved the issue, you can just come in here, change the details, hit save, and it'll start working on that new alert for you as well, okay? So one of the other tools you've got at a reseller level is IP Monitor. Now with this, you can monitor the VoIP traffic of specific public IP addresses. 
So you can come in here, we've got a couple here for this, this demo site, so I've got a Croydon office and an India office. You literally just go in, add new, give the site a name, ignore the device type, it'll always be other in this case, and type in the public IP address. Now, what that will then do, it will filter through all the traffic, and it will give you this sort of high level overview of uh, active incoming and outgoing calls. So currently in the India office there are no calls, and there's a few going on in our Croydon office here. So there you go, two inbound calls, one outbound call. Um, what you can take a look at here as well under device statistics is you can drill down a bit further. So I can choose the Croydon office here. This graph will refresh shortly and you'll see the different uh, tabs we can go through. So there's a calls and a registrations graph. When that loads, it, uh, you have to select what you wanna see. So I'm just gonna go for registered contacts here, go on a five minute view and that should register and show you the registered contacts here. If I untick that and do active sessions outgoing, we should see at least one, which is the call we're on here. So there you go, there's a couple outgoing, what well, it was up until that point there. And you can draw that down, you can see for five minutes all the way out to 30 days. Um, and you can also go back 30 days on this graph as well. Um, so that's all there for you there. You've also got a terminated calls tab, which will show you all the calls that have um, ended up at this IP address, so all the calls inbound, and originated calls, which is obviously all the calls made from this IP address. Um, you can see attempted registrations and active registrations as well. So if you want to take a look at anything, uh, maybe any registration issues, you would look at attempted registrations. And if you want to just have a quick overview of what's in the active registrations tab, you'll see who's currently registered. Okay, so that is IP monitor. You can add any IP address in there as long as they don't conflict with something we put in. So you wouldn't be able to put maybe our SBCs in there. It's not something you've got control over, but any of your customers' public IP addresses you can put in. So maybe if someone's constantly doing star 57 for any problem calls they've got, you could go and find out what their public IP address is and put them in here to monitor. You can also kind of use this as a sort of uh, high level wallboard if you want to as well. Um, and you can set a refresh rate here as well if you want to. Okay, another tool that we've got in Packet Analyzer is user tracking. So if I go back into my site here, apologies. If I go back into the DRD demonstration site, we have another tool. So you'll notice that there's more menu options here under Packet Analyzer than there is when you drill down to site. Um, so under Packet Analyzer, we've got user tracking. Now user tracking is quite a handy tool when you want to drill down to one specific user. So rather than going into a user and looking at call logs or call recordings or anything along those lines, you can actually come in here and do user tracking and it should do a real time lookup as you're going through. So if I want to look at any user that starts with Yale link, and this is based on a username. So you can put in the, uh, a user's name, so Ed Frussell, Dean Thompson, uh, or in this case, Yale link, or some other detail. Let's have a look at a specific phone, T29. So that's the phone I'm gonna pick on there. If I hit search, the top here it will show me uh, real-time registration detail. Uh, so we can see there, we get the uh, all the registration from the contact URI, so the line port, the private IP address, uh, how it's contacting us, in this case it's TCP, UDP is more commonly used, but TCP is coming into play more often. Uh, the source IP address, so this is the public IP address, which is the one that you put into IP monitor to be able to monitor their public IP. The destination IP, which is the SBC you're registering to, so in this case they're going to our primary registration point for uh, end user devices. You can see when it's going to expire, usually most devices it'll be 120 seconds, and when it was last refreshed, and when it was first seen, so you can see here, uh, yesterday at 2.06 this phone was rebooted, so you can see it did a full registration at that particular time. You can see the full user device details if it's sent within the SIP header in the registration packet. So we can see here it's a Yaylink SIP uh, T29. And this one here is the firmware level. And we'll come on to that uh, shortly about firmwares. We can also see here it's uh, usually accurate um, based on source IP and the IP address that shows up in the contact URI. Um, usually if these match, not always the case, but most of the time, if that IP address here matches this IP address here, it will be flagged as SIP ALG on. As you're probably all aware, SIP ALG should be turned off by default. It causes a lot of issues. Um, so it's a quick way, if someone says they're having some issues, you can come in here very quickly and just take a look at the registration and just say, oh, okay, SIP ALG is on. Let's try and get that turned off if we can. Uh, the next um, table underneath shows all of the contact details in terms of um, registration attempts. 
So we can see here, a couple of times it was gone yesterday. Uh, so when it sends a gone with a code of zero, it means we've forcibly, uh, not forcibly, sorry, it's done a nice shutdown, if you will. Um, you can see uh, the events of new. If you were seeing a lot of my unauthorized here, you could download the PCAP using this button here again if you wanted to, um, or you could look at the info like we saw earlier on the calls. So you're getting that same information about the, about the registrations that you do about the calls. Underneath here, this is where you can look at calls specifically for this user. So it does the last couple of days worth of calls here. Um, so again, you can see star 57 calls have been made by this user. Um, you can grab the call. This one thing to bear in mind, this is um, any call to or from this user you should see within this, um, within this table here. A lot of the calls are obviously made outbound, but you can see here that a call was made inbound from uh, 1240 to this user. Um, it gives you a start time, a duration, a, a code status, so finished or cancelled, and then it gives you that zip code there as well. So again, maybe if you're seeing a lot of cancelled calls for some reason, you could set up one of those custom alerts to look at all cancelled calls. It, it's down to you guys and tell me what you want to do there. So again, so if you were seeing a lot of 401 unauthorized here for some reason, you could put this in here or busy everywhere or whatever you see, you can, we can report on that code. Uh, and again, download the trace of the call or grab that high level call info. Um, another thing we want to obviously talk about is uh, device registrations and uh, firmware. So if we go back in the packet analyzer, we'll base it on the site again. We're going to registrations. What you see is a graphical representation of the devices that are within this site when it loads. Um, and it will show you a little pie chart of all of the devices, the different devices within this site. Uh, and all of the different firmwares in use. So we can see there, you, you can use this table along the top, this graph, to show you if there's any sudden dips within the site. And again, like we saw earlier on calls, you can drill right down in here if you want to. So where we've rebooted a couple of phones over the last four hours, you can see those dips. Um, so obviously if you're looking at a reseller level and you see a large dip, something's obviously happened. Could be a site's gone down. If it obviously comes back up, at least you can look into it and see what happened at that time. Uh, again, you've got the active registrations and attempted registrations for the site or the, the reseller or the business, whatever level you're at. But the, the, the good thing on this page here, it looks nice and colorful on this one. It's a demonstration suite, so we tend to have one of each phone in here. If you're looking at a different level, you'd see obviously a, a, a more granular breakdown of this. But we can see here which phones are registered within this site. If I want to filter this down, I can do a search for just T29, for example, one of the uh, more popular phones on the platform. Uh, let's take a little look there. So there's one on this demonstration suite. And what I can do here is if I've got, say, 50 here, I can drill down into that by clicking onto the device and it'll break down as to who all the users are, what the MAC addresses are. We can do a little bit work, more work here. Now, one thing we can do if I, if you look at this part here, this is the firmware level that's currently in use for this device. So uh, what we tend to do on our devices is we have a current firmware available one that's being tested and a previous firmware. It tends to be the standard that we run across the platform. So the current that most people are using, if they're experiencing an issue, they might be able to upgrade to a later firmware, which has maybe got a bug fix in it, or maybe even roll back a firmware if required, if a new bug has been found. You've got a bit of flexibility there that you can run through. And I'll run through how we can do that. So let's just assume that this one is on an older firmware. What we can do, if I go back at the site level, sorry, we can do this at a site, a business, a user, or a, um, a reseller level if you want to. We're gonna do it at the site level. Uh, no, sorry, we're gonna do it at the business level, sorry. What we're gonna do is go into settings and device and configuration options. What I'm gonna do is just quickly look for that T29. And there we go, I've got the T29 there. If I go into this, uh, this is obviously at the business level. But, um, what I can do here, I can choose the firmware I want to choose for this site, uh, for this business in fact. I can say, okay, well actually I, there's, a, there's a problem with this, so I wanna roll it back to that firmware there. I can just scroll down, hit save. If I wanna reset to what the reseller level is, so maybe someone's gone in and they've edited all this. So this, this page, sorry, apologies. This page where you can set all your device configuration options, things like the firmware level, the BLF type on the phone, whether LDAP is enabled, all these sort of things, firmware, um, sorry, codec preference. 
you can change all these settings here, but if someone goes in, changes something, and it breaks something, what you can actually do is at the bottom of the page, you can reset to parent value. So whatever you've got set as a default across your reseller, uh, you can push that down to the, you can force that to be the default. So what you can then do is just hit save. I'm gonna hit cancel because I don't wanna change that particularly. But then what we can do is go into the, um, I can go into the device pool. If I've obviously got multiple of these, I'm just gonna pick on one. Uh, in the device pool, if I look for the T29, I can go to that device. It'll take me directly to that one device page. Um, and I can just do configure device. It will send up a new config file for that phone and then hit restart and that device will then restart there. What I can also do at a reseller level is under settings and device yeah, and devices is I can actually schedule these to actually restart in the evening. So obviously if you've got a whole site that you want to firmware upgrade or in fact if you've got a whole, you want to do a firmware upgrade on your whole base of phones, what you can do again, look for the particular device you're after. So we're looking for the T29. We'll go into that device. So this, this is just a generic level now. We're not looking at a specific user. So if I go into the device uses list, you can see I've got a configure all devices and a restart all devices. So if I hit configure all, um, what this will do is this will set up a, uh, an email alert. I go in here, I'm gonna choose a business. I'm the only business with a T29. So I'm gonna hit select. What's that, what that's gonna do is send an email out to say, um, I'll, I'll, I won't put one in there. Um, what it will do is it will send an email out and that email when you hit save will look like this one here. So it'll say there's been a bulk device configuration, it's been completed, one of one device has been successfully updated. So once it's written that config file, it will send out this alert to you guys as a reseller to say this, this alert, uh, sorry, this device has been rebuilt. So you can now go ahead and reboot it. So obviously if you've got a thousand devices, it will take a bit longer, but once you've got that email through, you know each one of those config files has been pushed to our device server. What you can then also do, okay, so you want to upgrade all of those T29s. You don't want to do it during a day. Let's say there's a thousand of, a thousand of them. You can do a restart all devices. Now we've put some smarts in the system to say, okay, you don't want to do that right now. If it's a single device and you're at a user level, you can obviously tell the customer, I'm going to restart your device or all these particular ones on site. But let's say you're going to do it for your whole base. You could give someone a war your whole base a warning that you're going to restart all the phones to pick up this firmware change. So what you're going to say is, okay, for this particular business, hit select. Tonight on this date, so if we said tomorrow night at between 10 o'clock or 5.30, we're gonna say at 1.30 a.m. this device, our platform UBOS is gonna send out a, a restart notification to your devices of T29. Let us know what's gonna happen. Put an email address in there again, and then what will happen is you'll get an alert just before the restart actually happens. So the nice thing about this is, it will send out a, an export of all of the devices that were registered at that particular time. So just before it does the restart, it will pull all that information through. Um, it will pull all that information through of who was registered, what site they're at, their MAC addresses, all that detail there. So you've got an idea, a, screen sh uh, uh, a split second in time of what was happening in that particular, for those particular devices, how they were registered. So you know exactly what was there before you started. And then when it's done, a little while after it's completed, it will send you another one to say, these are all the devices that are currently registered after it's happy that that device reset has happened. So again, if there's a dis if there's a discrepancy between the start and the end, at least you can do a compare between the two spreadsheets and you can find out who's got a problem. Maybe someone had a network issue during the reboot and it's caused a, a problem with the downloading of the firmware and it's maybe bricked the phone. Then at least you can go back through and take a look at that info. And I think that's everything I wanted to cover off. I'll pass you back to Steve. Thanks, Ed. Uh, that's powerful stuff, indeed. Uh, so just a reminder, any questions, please uh, use the toolbar on the right-hand side. Um, and we'll get to those in a second. But I think just, just by way of summary, uh, I think, you know, in terms of trying to position yourself as a service provider, this is this sort of level of tools and capability that you need. Um, you know, you can't be backing this, this sort of stuff out. And I think really this is, goes in hand in hand with trying to scale out uh, a hosted business the way we all want it to work, you know, to really scale up the big numbers, you know, th that's where these kind of tools really start to differentiate, you know, it absolutely puts you in control 
and uh, and makes you a service provider in your own right. Um, Shah, do we have any questions? Yeah, we've got a few. Um, so to clarify star 57, do you press star 57 after an incoming call has finished? And for an outbound call, do you press star 57 during the call? No, it's always the next call you make. So if there's a problem with an inbound or an outbound call, hang up the phone, dial star 57, and it just goes based on the last call. It doesn't matter whether it's inbound or outbound. Okay. Um, how do you know what firmware the different handsets should be using? Uh, that you can get from our support team, but the one that's usually set by default, if you do, if you look at your parent level, whatever the default there should be the one that you should be using. If there's any questions around that, please contact the support desk in the usual way, and they'll be able to advise you. Um, can all calls be reset, reset remotely? Uh, Sorry, can all devices? Okay, no, yes. Uh, um, all the ones that you, the only ones you'll be able to reset. I mean, it's all Yealink, it's all Polycom. Um, a couple of the Cisco devices. When you go to the configure device page, if there isn't a restart option there, it's not a device you can you can automatically reboot or manually reboot, should I say. Okay, and do all call traces include audio? No, they don't, that's a very good question. So if you have poor quality calls, um, we have control of turning RTP monitoring on. So if you do need to do RTP monitoring so the voice path, please contact the support guys and they'll be able to turn that on on a site or an individual basis for you. The reason we've kind of got control over that is a lot of data there going through. There needs to be a bit of control about who's actually turning that on and off. Um, so we have control of being able to do it on a, a daily rate or a couple or a week or so on and so forth. But if you do need to turn it on, just let our guys know and uh, we can turn it on for you. And then every call that you'll download that should have that enabled, you'll see the RTP streams and be able to listen back to those. Okay, one more. Um Somebody can't see the packet analyzer tool under the tab on the left. Okay, cool. So um, underneath, let me go back to you boss a second. So in theory, you should have it as a role as an admin. If you can't see it for any reason, under your portal user role, so whoever your admin for the business is, under the reseller portal access portal user here on the left, if we go to me as a user here, uh, there I am. There is a specific role for Packet Analyzer. So if I go in here, you'll see one right there. So it's just Packet Analyzer. So if you haven't, can't see Packet Analyzer, tick this box. And it's been running for the last few months, so it's not like you tick the box, you're only gonna get that information from today. It's historical, it's all there, so you'll be able to get all that detail through. I hope that helps. Great, that's, that's it for questions. Thank you very much. Thanks everybody for joining.